Good day, everyone. I'm Miguel G. Abbas Jr., AMSAIA candidate, and I will be presenting my thesis entitled Corporate Governance Practices in a Family-Owned and Controlled Corporation in Cebu, a case study. Background and rationale. As the business grows in size and operations, the number of challenges that an organization is facing is on the rise, such as financial setbacks, non-compliance, and even fraud issues leading to adverse business impact to the business. Globally, financial crimes committed by the topmost organizational leaders led to the collapse of a number of companies like Enron, WorldCom, Tyco International, and just recently Wirecard in Europe. These major scandals led to significant corporate governance reforms. In the Philippines, the SEC released corporate governance codes for various types of companies except for a privately held, family-owned, and controlled corporation. More homegrown family-run companies are transforming from a traditionally ruled organization to a professionalized family business. The real-life context of a family-based corporate governance cemented the interest of the researcher. Given these conditions, this study is conducted to determine the current state of governance practices in the research family-run enterprise and assess the degree of alignment with the established corporate governance standards in order to propose a corporate governance framework for a family-owned and controlled corporation. Specifically, the study will answer the following questions. Number one, what are the governance practices implemented in the studied FOCC vis-a-vis -vis the Code of Corporate Governance for Public Listed Companies with respect to the following key elements? The board's governance responsibilities, disclosure and transparency, internal control system and risk management framework, cultivating a synergic relationship with shareholders and duties to stakeholders. Number two, what is the extent of alignment of the family enterprise governance practices? Number three, how can corporate governance standards for listed companies be applied to a family enterprise? Number four, why a family-owned and controlled corporation will observe or adopt with the corporate governance standards? Number five, based on the findings of the study, what corporate governance framework can be proposed? Theoretical framework. Currently, the Philippines has no code of corporate governance that is tailored for privately held family-owned and controlled corporations. With this, the theoretical framework of this study will be anchored on what is available in the country, the Code of Corporate Governance for Publicly Listed Companies in the Philippines as codified by the SEC. The 2015 version of the G20 OECD Principles of Corporate Governance was used as key primary source in the creation of said code. Conceptual Framework the researcher identified the constructs pertaining to the five key elements of the Code of Corporate Governance for publicly listed companies as the main factors for consideration in the study. The corporate governance practices of the research FOCC were evaluated based on the constructs identified. Subsequently, the written survey results, responses from participants of focus group discussions, and documentary review observations were consolidated, analyzed, and interpreted. Finally, the researcher proposed a corporate governance framework that would be applicable to a family-owned and controlled corporation. Research methodology. The research employed a case study strategy with the purpose of generating answers such as what, how, and why. The research was conducted in the main office of the research FOCC in Cebu Business Park, Cebu City. Primary data were collected through survey questionnaires distributed to 24 respondents who are all managers. Focus group discussion was also made to allow direct interactions with the elected respondents. The researcher gathered secondary data from company internal records such as policies and relevant regulatory forms. Data collected were treated using triangulation method as follows. Survey. The survey questionnaires employed the five points Likert scale. Weighted average was also used. Focus group discussion. Thematic content analysis was conducted by looking for themes which occur more than once using frequency and percentages using a free qualitative data analysis software called QDA Miner. Observation and documentary review. Content analysis was also used. Discussion of results. FOCC Governance Practices vis-a-vis -vis Code of Corporate Governance for Publicly Listed Companies The study found out that most of the managers neither agree nor disagree to the majority of the research family-owned control corporations' governance practices in relation to the corporate governance standards. This neutrality is based on the perception of the managers based on their individual first-hand experience and professional understanding of the current governance practices of the company. Extent of Alignment of Family Governance Practices Among the five key elements of the Code of Corporate Governance, the family enterprise governance practice is substantially aligned to the board's governance responsibilities and cultivating a synergic relationship with stakeholders, and moderately aligned to transparency disclosure, internal control system and risk management framework, and duties to stakeholders. 
methods of adopting the corporate governance standards into a FOCC. The adoption methods for the corporate governance standards into a family or controlled corporation can be grouped into three categories, such as defining the board's role in corporate governance, establishing a culture of commitment and sense of responsibility, and communication of relevant information. Justifications for observing the corporate governance standards into a FOCC. The study has also discovered that the benefits of observing corporate governance into a FOCC can be categorized into five themes, such as achievement of company goals, board smooth decision making, relationship synergy, and strong internal control system, and social responsibility and sustainability. Proposed family based corporate governance framework. This case study aspired to contribute to the existing body of knowledge in the field of corporate governance. More importantly, it intended to propose a corporate governance framework for FOCC. It is composed of five themes as follows. The family's board's governance roles, promotion objective communication and commitment, internal control system and risk management framework, harmonizing dual focus of family and business interests, and fostering good relations to stakeholders. Conclusions. The Code of Corporate Governance for Publicly Listed Companies is applicable for a privately held family business to a substantial degree. In the research family-owned and controlled corporation in Cebu, most of the governance practices being implemented are aligned with the corporate governance standards. Recommendations As privately held businesses are not required to mandatorily comply with the Code of Corporate Governance for listed companies, it is recommended in this study that family businesses should take advantage of this freedom to explore the proposed corporate governance framework for FOCC and examine governance principles in greater detail. The researcher wished to highlight the following recommendations for top management consideration. Upscale the board's functions by attending trainings or corporate governance, increasing devotion and business familiarization, and actively participating in the family dealings. Number two, establish an audit committee to uphold the independence of internal audit department. Number three, establish and maintain a comprehensive communication channel and adequate reporting structure for informed decision making by the directors and other stakeholders. Number four, strengthen the internal control system by establishing formal policies and procedures. Number five, develop policies and programs for human capital covering occupational health, safety, and employee welfare, training, and competency development and rewards program. And that ends my thesis presentation. Thank you.